Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Bravo Got This, and today we're gonna go over all you need to know about Master Ritz. This is a video that I had many people in my Discord and Twitch chat request for a guide, and so I thought, you know what? It's a little confusing, so why not make a guide for y'all? Master Ritz are kind of the end game of crafting per se, if crafting has an end game, but these are Ritz that can reward you with vouchers that can in turn be used for some pretty sweet stuff at vendors. There's also a lot of other things as well to cover with these, so we will get into that now. Before we get started, I do want to mention that if you want to watch me play live, I stream on twitch.tv slash probably got this on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, if you want to join a growing community, you can join our Discord, the Brafia, and our Guild of Necrodaddies in-game. The links to all those are in the description. You can also follow me on my social media, on Instagram and Twitter, to get updates from me and other things. Again, the links are in the description. And if you want to enter this week's fashion video, there will be prizes for the top five. The link will be in the description for that, and you can check our Discord to submit your fashion picture but let's go ahead and jump into the video now so we are going to go over the following things timestamps of course will be in the description below but we're going to go over the add-ons that help you with this for pc users we're going to go over when you get these writs how to get these writs how many you can do at a time or where to turn them in along with other details the rewards from doing these master writs and tips for doing master writs as well as are the master writs worth it now, first thing I want to show you is the add-ons that help you doing master writs. These are Dogobond's Lazy Writ and Set Crafter that will help you craft these sets for you. Craft Store and ESO Master Recipe List, which will show you the writ requirements and if you have met them or not. This is something that is really nice to have, and if you're not if you're on PC, then you should have it. So to start out, let's talk more about these writs and how they are unlocked. You do not have to access any DLC to get these writs or ESO plus, these will drop for you in the base game. Normal writs are daily quests that can be done when you start getting your crafter certified and can be found on the boards in most major cities throughout the game. You can do provisioning, blacksmithing, clothing, woodworking, enchanting, and alchemy in the base game. If you have summer set, you can do jewelry writs as well. Master writs, however, are consumable quests that can drop randomly from completing these daily writs only at level 50 in your respective professions. So you need to be doing the max level daily writs to have a chance to receive these. This again is a random chance and drop. On just one run of my daily writs, I usually can get one every two days or so. Now, the only other way you can receive these is if you want to buy them from guild traders. Plenty of players sell these to other players, and currently, the exchange of these are very, very like volatile. So they, they really depend on the writ, but right now, the ones that I see usually go from around 350 to 500 gold per writ voucher. So if you have one that is 50 writ vouchers, you may get uh, 25k for it, or you may get like roughly like 15k for it. It's just it's very volatile. So you just have to kind of see what they go for and sell it for those price for those prices. Now we are going to go into the writs themselves in a detailed view. Each writ can drop from either can drop either blue, purple, or gold rarity. Each of these will be a consumable quest that you can do that will give you writ vouchers as rewards. You can only have one master writ quest active at a time per profession. So for instance, you, can, you can't have two blacksmithing writs active at a time. You can hold them, but you can't do the quests two, two at a time. I wish you could, but it doesn't let you. So if you have writs for each profession, you can have up to seven at a time active in your quest log. In regards to the rarity of the writ vouchers, the higher the rarity, the more vouchers you will get from the quest as a reward usually, so a blue one will give you less vouchers than a yellow one. The rarity also indicates the rarity of the item you will have to make, so for yellow master writs, you'll need to upgrade the item to legendary with yellow upgrade mats. By the way, if you haven't watched my beginner crafting video, I'll link that in the description and at the top of the screen for all of you if you want to check it out. Also, the higher the rarity, typically I've had to do harder things for those writs so sometimes like harder sets to craft or more traits required so i just want to mention that that's the next thing i want to talk about to you though is so for the professions like blacksmithing woodworking clothing and jewelry crafting these writs will have specific items that you need the style in which you need to craft that item the trait that the item needs to be in and the set this is why i say researching traits is basically so important in all my videos because when you get to higher end writs you get to the point where you have to craft sets that require eight traits or seven traits or so so this is where researching is important so for example we can use this writ as an example for this shield we need to make a ruby ash shield with legendary quality so that's yellow with nernhone trait 
in the in the cold snap motif style at hunting's rage set table as you can see my add-on says i don't have the cold snap motif so i'll need to get that motif for before i can craft this this one will also give me 79 vouchers once you complete this you can turn this into rollis halu the master rip merchant he is located in all the undaunted enclave cities for each faction so for aldermary dominion he'll be in elden root in daggerfall covenant he'll be in wayrest and for ebon art pact he'll be in mournhold when you go to him, you will receive your vouchers and get your gold and experience. Now, we're going to go over all the rewards you can get from these. I want to mention that once you consume your writ and get the voucher reward, you cannot trade vouchers with people. Okay, so you guys have now gotten to the Mastercraft Mediator or Master Merchant Dude, Rollis. And so we're going to go through everything that he has as a reward. We're also going to go to the Achievement Lady as well to the left. We're going to go through each of these. So you've got first thing you have is alchemy station which is 35 rip vouchers this is you can just put this in your home and this is just like any other alchemy station you've got animus stone which allows you to create uh combat dummies so basically it's like an ingredient for a combat dummy so you can do like parses on in your house this is 50 rip vouchers you also see here with the Master Merchant add-on, you see some of the prices that you can buy this for, for gold or sell for, roughly. So just keep that in mind. You've got a tunable blacksmithing station. So basically, all of these attunable ones, what the difference is between a tunable and normal is a tunable means you can consume this at a set anywhere in the world. So what I just told you guys about uh, crafting a specific set for each Master Rit voucher, um, you can go to those stations and attune these stations to that set and put them in your house. So like in our guild house, in our guild hall at my house, we have like eight crafting sets already there. We've got like Hunting's Rage, Julianos, Torg's Pack, just a bunch of them. So you can put all of these in your house. So this is 250 rip vouchers. It's the same with a uh, tunable clothier station, tunable woodworking station. And then I believe uh, we'll get into the jewelry one here in a second as well. The jewelry one's in the other side, but uh, so then you have the regular blacksmithing station, same as the alchemy one, 35 rip vouchers. Um, you've got the clothing station there, and you got the woodworking station there. They're both 35 rip vouchers. So then you have the elsewhere, elsewhere well covered blueprint, and this is for furniture, like for furnishings or furniture. And I'm assuming that these are going to change when Graymore comes out. Uh, some of these are going to change. So just keep that in mind. But this is 125 vouchers. Um, and this is just a furnishing blueprint. Uh, you can also get the complete glass style motif for 180 vouchers. You can get individual ebony styles right here. These are all uh, 25 writ vouchers and you can get the complete ebony style book for 300 writ vouchers you also have the elsewhere bread basket furnishing you've got the elsewhere gong ornate furnishing you've got diminished aetherial dust which helps you make aetherial ambrosia which is an experience potion so these are very nice they're 50 vouchers you've got the dye station and the enchanting station 435 vouchers you've got the elsewhere mortar and pestle engraved for 125 vouchers furnishing you've got gilding wax which helps you craft jewelry with an intrinsic intrinsic trait and that is 20 vouchers you have the journeyman furnishers document this is a sealed furnishing plan that when you open it it will give you a random superior furnishing plan that's 10 vouchers then you have the epic one, which will for 25 vouchers gives you a random uh, furnishing that's epic quality. You then have knight pumice, which is ingredient for crafting the ebony style for eight vouchers. You've got the elsewhere bed blue uh, furnishing. You've got the Khajiit sigil moon cycle. You've got the uh, so those are like the elsewhere ones right there. Then you have the target centurion dwarf brass so this is a target dummy this is the formula for it and like you see you see all the ingredients there tempering alloy cuda regulus dwarven oil dwarven construct construct repair parts and anima stone this is 275 writ vouchers for this and you got the centurion robust fabricated one uh 450 writ vouchers for this target dummy you've got the target skeleton humanoid which is 125 vouchers you've got the target skeleton robust humanoid you have the provisioning station like i said before that's 35 writ vouchers 
You've got Aetheral Ambrosia Recipe, 250 Rit Vouchers. This is the one above Sigic Ambrosia, and then the one above that is Mythic, um, basically. And the one above that is Mythic Ambrosia, which is 150% experience for 30 minutes. You've got a research scroll for blacksmithing that speeds up for one day for three vouchers. you got a research scroll for clothing for three vouchers, woodworking for three vouchers. And then you've got a, a sketch for Elsewhere Game Swan Stones. This is 125 vouchers. You've got storage chests for 200 vouchers here. And then you've got storage coffers, which are 100 vouchers. You then have the big, big, big... Then you then have the Transmute Station, which is an amazing thing to have in your guild hall, which we have as well. This is 1,250 vouchers or 702,000 gp or 775k i think roughly is the average right now so that's it for rollis now let's look at faustina she is the achievement mediator so once you get certain achievements in you know master ritz or you know throughout the game you can get some of these and buy them so one of the things she has is the attunable jewelry craft station which again this is can be attuned to any uh you know set in the game this is 250 vouchers just like the other ones you also just have a normal jewelry crafting station here as well and um, an outfit station, which is like a little different, I guess, than having, you know, the other one. But this is 500 vouchers. Um, then you just have all of these blueprints. I'm not going to go into all these, but you have all of these blueprints. There are various things you can like. You can basically like look at them like this by just clicking on them and you can preview some of them. You have all those, you have mixed furniture documents, kind of like, this is just kind of like a loot thing where you can just buy it and it gives you a random one. You've got all that there. You've got a research jewelry crafting for one day. And then you've got these. So this is Somerset. This is Morrowind. This is Elsewhere. And this is Clockwork. So these are all what she has right here. And this allows you to, you know, basically get things for your house. That's, that's what these mediators and everything are for. Now let's go into a few tips for doing these master rits because some of you may be wondering if there is some quicker ways to do this or more efficient methods. And honestly, here are my most efficient ways to do this. Since these can only be turned in to master rit merchants and not just any rit deposit box, the best way to do this is as follows. Look to see what rits you are able to do by looking at the requirements. Consume each of these professions. Then if you're on PCNA, we have a guild hall that has a ton of set tables for crafting. You can teleport to my residence or try to find someone, if not on PC, that has these. Otherwise, find the sets on the map. Map out the quickest path to do these writs. Go to each table, craft the writs. Make sure to craft all the ones you have consumed. For provisioning, alchemy, and enchanting, you won't have to leave your undaunted enclave town. These can be done on regular tables. Once you've completed all of them, go to your master writ merchant and turn in the quests and rinse and repeat. The other thing I want to mention is you can buy certain motifs that we'll get into here in this last section that are consistent and quick to do for vouchers, but you're probably going to still net a gold loss. So just keep that in mind. We'll go into that here in just a second. Now, for the last section of the video, I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can because this is something that is very, very volatile and kind of confusing but I'm going to try to explain it in the best way possible. And that is, are master writs worth doing? That is a very loaded question, and it depends on what you want from them and what items or motifs do you have at your disposal. So first off, let's ask the question, is it viable to buy master writs from guild traders or to farm vouchers, or is it better off to just buy the items that you can retrieve from Rollis off guild traders instead? So the short answer to that is no. They are not viable for most people when it comes to the gold to voucher ratio. But let me explain in detail. If you're someone that has a ton of motifs unlocked already, then this is a viable way to do writs. The reason being is because writs themselves aren't too expensive to buy. So like the sealed writ, it's not that expensive to buy those usually. It's buying the mats or mainly the motif involved that will cost you a decent amount of gold, which will in turn make it more expensive to do the writ than just say buy an item on Rollis' store from the guild trader. Let's take a look in ex as an example. Again, let's look at this woodworking writ that I have. It is going to cost us 26K gold for the mats. I, however, already have the mats for the writ, but this motif I do not own. It is around 55K on average on guild traders. So if I have the mats, it will cost 55K for the motif and then probably around 20K 
for the writ if I didn't already receive this writ. So right off the bat, you're looking at 46K without the motif and 101K with the motif for 79 vouchers. Now take the attunable clothing station as an example. On average, is 150K gold in a guild trader. It costs 250 writ vouchers in Rolus's store. So for this writ, you would need to do basically three and a few small ones to get 250 vouchers. That would cost you 101K for the first one because you don't know the motif. Then for the next two, it would cost you 92K total for both because you own the motif, but you need to get the mats and you need the actual sealed writ. That's a total of 193K gold. That is roughly 43K gold over for what you would buy that table from a guild trader. As you can see, it's not worth it for those. Now, however, again, this varies a lot, which is why this is so hard to calculate for you all. Because what if someone has the mats already? So for instance, me, I have done writs for years. I've also have tons of gold mats to upgrade, and I have ruby ash for the shield, which means I don't have to pay for the mats. So you, Okay, so you take the mats out of it for the second and third writ you need to do. And that is 52K subtracted from... 193k which brings you to 141k and then you could also take another 26k gold out of it for the mats for the first one if i already have those and that will bring you to roughly about 115k gold so this brings you under the table price average on the guild trader so here you could say it is a little cheaper to do or buy the writ instead of just buying the table off the guild trader so you can see that this varies heavily on the amount of mats that you have and the motifs you know and how much each writ you buy is worth, okay? And it also varies on, you know, do you want to spend your gold upgrade mats on an item that's just being thrown away for a table? You know, if it's worth for the table, then do it. But if not, you could be using those gold upgrade mats on your actual armor and weapons. So that's a decision you have to make for yourself. This is the same thing for master writs you receive from your daily writ rewards. You have the benefit of not having to buy that writ already, but you still will need the mats and the motif possibly. With this, I've done some research and looked at various writs of different rarities and the motifs you need to know with these. And I would say more times than not, it's usually going to be more expensive gold-wise for you to actually do the writ than to just buy an item outright from a guild trader that you need from Rollis. So the best advice I can give you with are these viable to buy is you have to ask yourself and do the research on what writs you can actually do that would be profitable for you. This is different for each person. A rule of thumb that you can go by is look for the writs that you already have the motif for. Also, look for writs that the motif isn't very expensive to buy. These are all things that can help lower the initial cost and price of the actual sealed writ. Also, make sure to keep doing your surveys and daily writs to get your high-end mats so you don't have to purchase these later. Now, one writ that I want to mention that is pretty consistent is a provisioning writ called Orzorga's Smoked Bear Haunch. This, I bought this recipe for 35K. The recipe needs perfect row, which goes for around 12K, and some other mats which aren't too expensive. The writ will get you 40 vouchers every time. The writ is 8K roughly to buy on Guild Traders, and you'll need two perfect rows. So that's 32K gold total roughly for the writ. After you get the recipe, and by the way, this is the thing I told you about in the previous section about doing consistent writs fast. So after you get this recipe, this will get you 40 vouchers. If you do six of these, you'll get 240 vouchers and it will cost you around 192K gold. Again, it's around the same cost as the example above. The upside to this is it's the same thing each time and tons of people are selling this one on traders, and you don't have to hunt for this all over the place. So if you want to do some writs very quickly, you can buy a ton of these, just do them, and you'll get a lot of vouchers. Now, you might lose gold, but it will get you writs done very quickly. So you may be thinking, well, Adam, these just don't seem worth it then, so why should I ever do these? And so that's why I'm breaking this down for you. The reason that these can be worth it for some people is if you actually take your time and find writs that will net you positive vouchers to gold ratio. There are a lot, so it's tough to pinpoint exact ones because it's different for each person. So if you can do this, you can sometimes make these without having a loss, but it will take an initial investment to get motifs or other things. Also, these are good to do for achievements as well if you're after those. And 
you can also just sell these master writs to guild traders and make money from them. That's another option that you can have if you just don't want to do them. But my final tips on these are as follows. These are what I go by as a person who has eight to nine traits on all items researched and has a decent amount of motifs and mats. I only do my master writs that I receive freely from my daily writs, you know, from turning them into boxes. I never buy master writs from guild stores unless I see one that I can do for a profit and it's a steal because you will find that. Some people will sell these for cheap or something and it has a great, you know, benefit for you but for someone else that master writ might not be worth it for them but if you already know that motif you didn't have to spend money on that motif do it because you can probably make a good profit from that the reason i do this is if i get a master writ from my daily writ reward that requires me to buy a motif i'll buy that one eventually but i don't go out seeking master writs to buy motifs because i don't want to spend that money this is a guideline that you can follow if you're wondering if you should buy them stick to the ones that you receive freely until you know most of the motifs and traits I hope all of that made sense. Please let me know if it didn't. If it didn't make any sense to you, stop by our Twitch chat on twitch.tv slash probably got this Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ask me questions. Come join our guild, our Discord. Ask questions there. The links to all that will be in the description. Also, ask questions in the comments, okay? You can always do that. Just please let me know if that doesn't make sense. I want to try to help you guys and explain this to you as best I can. But that is the end of the video, guys. I hope that it did help. Make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell icon if you want to get notified for when I upload new content and everything. So again, I hope this helps you figure out a little bit more about Master Ritz and maybe to decide for yourself if you want to spend some time doing these or if you want to seek these out. But just remember guys, have faith, be great, and I'll see you guys on the next ESO video.